everyone, welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, we are going to be talking about gestational diabetes. So if this is a topic not relevant to you, maybe this video is not something that might be interesting. But for a lot of women who are pregnant or have a family history of diabetes, this can be very, very useful. Gestational diabetes is diabetes that is diagnosed during pregnancy. Usually, typically it happens after 27 weeks, but it could occur at any point in the pregnancy. That's why you'll see in most pregnancies, doctors will always order a sugar test just to check how your body reacts with sugar because that becomes very essential to your baby and your health as well. So let me first explain what gestational diabetes is. So gestational diabetes, as quoted, is a condition that causes high blood sugar during pregnancy. Like other type of diabetes, gestational diabetes affects how the body cell uses sugar, which also is called glucose. In people who have gestational diabetes, blood sugar usually returns to its typical level soon after the baby is born and that we will discuss a bit later in the video. But basically your body is not able to process sugar in the way it should. So one of the myths that uh, people have is that if you have gestational diabetes, it's probably because you're eating a lot of sugar, you are having a lot of ice cream, carbs. That is not true. Gestational diabetes is actually caused by the hormones produced by your placenta that makes insulin less effective. So your body is not able to process the sugar the way it is. So it is not caused by the carbs you eat, the sugar you eat, but it's just a result of your placenta. Which is why when a lot of women after they give birth and the placenta is removed from the body, they become okay. Diabetes just goes away and they're back to their usual diet and lifestyle. So a lot of time when women get diagnosed with gestational diabetes, they go into this guilt trip of, oh, maybe I ate too much sugar, I had a piece of cake, I had too much rice or carbs and I have been diagnosed with gestational and that could harm my baby, but that's not true. It's not something that's in your control. It's all about the hormones that's produced by your placenta. So first of all, to any mom who's going through gestational diabetes, know that it's not your fault. I think that's the number one thing to keep in mind. The second thing you need to know is that once you do get gestational diabetes, which is typically what they do is they test you uh, by giving you a bottle of glucose drink. You're supposed to drink it. They will check your sugar level in one hour and they will check your sugar and level in three hours if you fail your first. A lot of people have very high numbers in the one hour test and they do not require the three hour because they're already diagnosed with gestational. Some people may pass the first one but not the third one or vice versa. A lot can depend on how your body processes sugar. Now again, I'm not an expert. I'm not a dietitian doctor. So take all of this as my advice based on my experience. In such situations, it's best to always chat with your doctor. So to give you a little backstory, during my first pregnancy, I was on bed rest for a long time. And at 28, around 28 weeks is when I had my glucose test. And naturally, I was diagnosed with diabetes. It was not something I did not expect because my family has had a diabetic history. So I knew that this was likely to happen. But what the hardest part was is dealing with gestational diabetes. And that's where most women really, really get impacted and they suffer because your diet completely changes because you're trying to like battle with your hormones and keep those sugar levels in check when your hormones are actually making insulin that helps you control sugar less effective. So it's very difficult. It's easier early in the pregnancy, it gets really difficult as the pregnancy progresses. So for example, I was diet controlled up to 35 weeks and after 35 weeks, no matter what I did, my levels just go up and I had to start insulin. So a couple of things that I learned in this whole process is that, you know, one, your diet will change uh, during gestational diabetes, but it is not unmanageable. It is frustrating because you just can't eat everything you want and pregnancy can be full of like cravings and things you don't like and you just want to eat what you can, but it gets very, very difficult with a gestational diabetes. But if you are smart about it, it's manageable. So anyone who's been diagnosed with gestational diabetes, I always like recommend take a diary, note down things that you can eat. And when you speak to your nutritionist, which everybody who's diagnosed with gestational diabetes, will be getting one, you know, through your hospital. They will guide you through the whole process about what your diet could entail. I like to like write my own list and my own meals so that I don't have to worry too much 
when I'm thinking about meals because I think the hardest part was thinking what to eat at every meal because you have to be so aware and so conscious. So the gestational diabetes diet in general like encourages you to eat less carbs, less sugar, more protein and more veggies. It's great if you're not pregnant but when you're pregnant you know it becomes very very tough because you know you just want to eat nice food and you know that it's a little difficult because you're restricted in certain buckets. The mistake I made during gestational diabetes was not to eat enough carbs. I was very scared. I was, I, I just thought that if I eat carbs, it's going to harm my baby. And that's a mistake I made, which I may not if I ever get diagnosed again, um, is to make sure that carbs has to be part of your diet. It doesn't have to be in big quantity, but it has to be in a smaller quantity. Obviously, the chain goes like protein and veggies and then carbs and then, you know, uh, fats. You want fats as well. So I was very scared and I didn't eat enough carbs, uh, which resulted in Nishka, my daughter, being a little tinier. And I think that it's so important to speak to your nutritionist to kind of make sure you're allocating carbs in your meal as well in a smart way and in the quantity that is recommended by your nutritionist. So don't make the mistake of not eating carbs at all. The second thing is you have to up your protein and veggies a lot more than you would do naturally, which is not a bad thing because you know your baby and you do need a lot of more protein. I had a lot of meat aversions in my pregnancy, so it became really tough. But you know, I also resorted to protein powder because my meat consumption was very difficult for me. But if you're someone who doesn't have that aversion, great, you know, have all the chicken and the turkey and the fish, all the meats you can because that's great. In general, they recommend have a lot of veggies, especially if you're adding like carb heavy stuff like pasta or rice, always eat your veggies and protein first before you eat the carbs. So that's something that I think I learned through my process. I was really scared of insulin. I was like, oh my God, if I have to take insulin in me, something is wrong with my body, something is wrong with me, I'm doing something wrong. But I had very nice doctors who sat me down and said, insulin is nothing to be scared of. It will help you manage your sugar level better and you will not be hungry and you will be able to eat better. And I think I delayed taking insulin for a long time because I became very competitive with my numbers and I'm just like, I want to make this in control. So I did not take insulin and I wish I had earlier because I could have eaten more and felt more full uh, because I was always hungry. So do not make the mistake of staying hungry all the time because that also is not good for your sugar level and do not fear taking insulin or medication because that's just there to help you. A couple of things that really helped me is to like distribute my carbs, have frequent meals. I also took protein powder. I was having a little bit of oats. All these things kept me full and that was very, very helpful. Again, in hindsight, I'm able to talk about this because there was so much learning. In that moment, of course, it was very hard. The next thing is that drink a lot of water and exercise. So I was on bed rest and that was a disadvantage for me because I couldn't move around. So they always say when you finish eating your meal, drink lots of water, walk around, uh, your body will get activated and you will be able to manage your sugar levels better. So that's a component that I think I didn't get in my first pregnancy, but if I ever get pregnant again, I think that's something that I will keep in mind. Drink lots of water and walk after every meal. In gestational diabetes, fasting level becomes very important. So it's the reading when you... So let, let me break it down. You have to take measurements, like I said, in every meal, but you also have to take it the first thing in the morning. And for me personally, my fasting level was really hard to maintain as my pregnancy progressed, which is why I also had to take insulin. So, you know, for a lot of people, your levels after meals will be fine, but the fasting level becomes challenging. So that's something to know again, it's not your fault. It's just the placenta. Always remind yourself, it's just the placenta and you can manage it with the right medication. So don't stress too much about it. Uh, I could not control my fasting level after 35 weeks. It was just very difficult and life changed after I took insulin. It was great. I could eat properly and I could just manage my diabetes a little better. Another thing to know about gestational diabetes, after every meal, you'll be required to test yourself, uh, check your sugar levels and note it down with the meals that you've eaten and you will report it to the nutritionist at the end of every week. That's just a protocol to make sure that your numbers are in check and if you need any medication, they can recommend to you. I became very competitive about the numbers, which was not the right thing. The goal is to just stay in range. So if your goal is to be within 120, it's okay if you're 119. 
for me if i was 90 one day and 119 the other day i would get very stressed out about it and that was not the right thing it's important that you eat you feel full you're a pregnant person you need food so as long as you're in the range you're fine and my nutritionist said something very relevant she's like as long as you're in the range 75 80 percent of the time you're good your body and baby is very resilient so don't worry be aware conscious but don't beat yourself about it and the last thing to everybody who's going through gestational diabetes i would say is give yourself grace we all have ups we all have downs we have good days bad days and it's okay if there are days that you kind of mess up we learn from it as long as you're aware and conscious of what you're putting in your body and how you're dealing uh, with this whole process i think it's it's important to give yourself grace if one day you just feel like having a small piece of chocolate Again, at the end of the day, we are moms, we are responsible for our babies inside and it's important that we are mindful of how seriously we take gestational diabetes because it can have adverse effect on your baby and your body, your pregnancy in general. So it's very important that we track it, we keep it in mind, we check with our doctors constantly. But if something happens, you're going on a date night, you eat a little bit, don't beat yourself for it. Give yourself a little bit grace because it's a very, very hard process. In the end, after I had my baby, gestational diabetes, I was like, they checked my sugar levels and was perfectly fine. I got back to normalcy. But people who have gestational diabetes, they have a higher chance of getting diagnosed again if they have a second pregnancy or third pregnancy. And within five years, in general, they are prone to getting diabetes. So it's a good learning experience because when I had my gestational diabetes, in that moment, I hated it. But it taught me so much about how our body works and how we process food that that was something I could incorporate into my day-to-day -day lifestyle. And that is helpful because I am someone who is at risk for diabetes. And just managing my lifestyle, eating my proteins, adding more veggies, it became a lifestyle change and it just helped me as a person better. And I think that's how you should view gestational diabetes, where you, it's a learning experience for those who not had diabetes, that it will teach you how to manage your life better. So this was my experience with gestational diabetes. I actually have a lot to say about it. So I'm going to record more shorter videos because I realize when my videos are longer, you guys don't like to watch it so much. So I'm going to try and keep my videos short and informative. But I hope this was a good summary of what gestational diabetes could look like and how to manage it. I will get into the detail more later, but I hope it was useful and I will see you with many more videos. Till then, lots of love.